Good morning, guys. Um, so, you know, a couple months ago, I told you that the Lord was putting on my heart to start sharing these devotionals. I have about 10, 10 books or so. And I was busy all summer long. And when I did have time, I was sharing my dreams and visions. So when I was done camping, I started doing them. So it's been a couple of weeks now. Um, but this morning, right before I woke up, I don't know if it was 10, 20 minutes or so, the Lord showed me a specific devotional book. And it was turned to the page 317. So when I woke up, I grabbed my coffee and I opened that, that book to 317. And I feel like this is very important and I know it's from the Lord um, because this is the most subject that he talks about in the Bible. And I know many of you guys are thinking, well, this is in the Old Testament. It doesn't concern us today. Well, that's a bunch of hooey. It's nonsense. It's very important to the Lord. And um, it doesn't mean that we're not going to go to heaven if we don't do this, but the Lord tells us to do so, and we need to be obedient, and we need to be servants, and we need to be the Lord's hands and feet. Um, and I've talked about this many times over in my videos. And um, you guys, I just don't pick up a devotional book every morning and read it when I share it with you guys. I might have to read 20, 30 of them before I feel like that's the one that the Lord wants me to share. And what I've noticed in my videos is um, I get about 10% of my subscribers watching my videos on the devotionals. And it makes me feel good when I read the comments saying you don't know how much I needed this word today. Um, you guys, I read my devotionals every morning because I, I like to start my day off with the Lord. And um, I know it's going to be a good day if I pray about it and ask Him to be with me every second of that day. And, of course, read your Bibles. Um, but you guys, this morning when um, I woke up, right before I woke up, He showed me this devotional the specific devotional book, and it was turned to 317. So I'm going to read it for you guys, and then I'm just going to share a quick story to go along with it. Um, so it's titled, Be a True Believer. For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now I will arise, says the Lord. I will set him in the safety for which he yearns. Psalm 12:5. Since the Bible contains more than 2,000 scriptures about our duty to the poor and needy, he must be trying to get a message across to us. It's very important for us to be involved in some way in helping widows, orphans, and people who are poor, needy, oppressed, or afflicted. When people are oppressed, they have a burden that is unreasonable. It overwhelms, overpowers, and depresses them. Their burdens often cause them to lose hope. God is a father to the fatherless and a defender of widows. Psalm 68, 5. He seems to have a special place in his heart for people who are lonely and have no one to take care of them. James 1, 27 says that true religion that is expressed in outward acts is to visit, help, and care for the widows and orphans in their affliction. This means if our religion is real, we will get involved in helping those who are oppressed by life's circumstances. I have learned that everyone who sits in a church on Sunday may not be a real Christian. According to James 1.27, following rules, regulations, and doctrines does not make one a true believer in Jesus Christ. I believe that because when we receive Christ as Savior, we receive the heart of God and His Spirit comes to dwell in us. This means we have to learn to care about what God cares about, and He cares about helping hurting people. So you guys, you know in Malachi 
310, I believe it is. This is the only place in the Bible where it says, test him. Test him. And when you do this, he says he will open up the windows of heaven and will pour out a blessing that we cannot contain. He is not a liar. You guys, when I moved to Montana 14 years ago and I gave my life to the Lord 100%, that's the one thing that he started um, working in me on was tithing. Even the times where I couldn't afford it and I still stayed faithful and I still gave, I always made my bills. I always put food on the table. And I am a witness that 14 years later that my income has did a 10 time fold. You guys, I talked to my dad a couple years ago. He died three years ago. So about five years ago or so, I was talking to my dad about tithing. And um, he was on a railroad dis disabled check. And he says, well, I can't really afford to tithe because I only, I have a limited income. And I said, dad, you can't afford not to tithe. You know, God tells us to give. And I said, with God, all things are possible. Don't ever underestimate the Lord. And you guys, he did. He said, well, okay. Um, I was taking care of his finances at that time. And I wrote out a check for the 10%. And um, you guys, within three months, in three months, he got a letter, it was um, about the cost of living. It was called COLA, cost of living. I don't know what the A stands for. But um, the Lord gave him back. They did an increase on his railroad retirement for the 10% plus about another 5%. So the Lord gave him back 15% of what he gave. You guys, um, every time I leave my home, especially when I go over to Bozeman in my monthly shopping trips, I always pray for the Lord to put people in front of me um, that need help. And I like to be a stepping stone because if I ever got in a situation where I needed help, I would pray and hope that the Lord would put one of his children in front of me to help me, like I have many. Um, you guys, it's just the right thing to do. And like I said, you know, just don't think that it's like in the Old Testament and it doesn't apply to us now. Like this, this devotional said, there's over 2,000 scriptures in the Bible that speaks about helping those that need help. And I don't care if you're on a social security check of $600, $700, and you say you just can't make it. This is the time when you're at your lowest in life and you can barely make ends meet, is to step out in faith and give that. Even if you can only give $10, go down to the food bank in your city and give. Get on the internet, um... My heart belongs to children. I just love children, and children can't help them themselves, you know. There's Children's National, Feed the Children, Love a Child. There's many, many great organizations out there that help these children. I mean, you can turn on your TV, and especially on the, ch the Christian programs, and see all these charities that are helping these children. And just think about it for a moment when um, you see these kids that have to go to the dumpsters. You know, they're five years old, you know, or eat oatmeal every day or don't have a pair of shoes to put on their, their little tiny feet. And they're walking in filth. These are the people that the Lord is telling us to help. You know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be... Um, your finances either. I mean, just helping somebody um, that needs help moving or, um, you know, like you see somebody at the, um, like with me, like nursing homes, people that never go visit them, take a half an hour on Saturdays and go to your local nursing homes 
And you guys, I've worked in nursing homes. I've seen it. Like 98% of the people that are in nursing homes, their families just stick them in there and forget about them. You know, like they already died and they don't get visitors. You know, if you can't afford to do that financially, so in that way, go help somebody that that has nobody. You know, there's so many people in the nursing homes that still have their minds and they still need to be loved and know that there's still a human peop a human being and people care. You know, to go so take a Saturday out and go spend a half hour, hour with somebody that has absolutely nobody. You know what I'm saying? Just open up your hearts a little bit more and um, see what God has in store for you. And like I said, he will open up those windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. Like I said, I'm a witness. My dad's a witness. We don't give to get back. We give for the glory of God. And when the Lord tells us to be with the widows, be for the orphans, we need to do that. It's very important. And I believe that's why he showed me this devotional this morning, because it is important to him, you guys. So just pray about it. Take it to the Lord. Don't just shut this video off and move on to the next let it soak into your heart and into your soul, and God will show you your next step. He will show you who to give to or spend time with or whatever he wants you to do. We're all different. He has different purposes for every single one of us, but we all have a purpose in life, and that is to be God's hands and feet. And he puts his love through us and that's one thing we don't ever run out of every morning we are new god will pour out his his love into us so that we can give it to others but you guys i got people to get up so i gotta go um i love you jesus loves you and i'll talk to you guys soon take care and god bless